Hi everyone, welcome, John here. This is part two of the WordPress scraper. If you followed along with part one, we should end up with a code that looks a bit like this. All I've done is I've actually changed it to uh, XLX, XLSX to export to not CSV. Uh, we had some problems with the data coming out in CSV in a bit of a funny format, and we were missing lines. So that's resolved with save to XLS. So if I run this, you can see it's saved, and all is working fine. So the first thing that we'd want to do is we want to tidy our code up a bit and turn it into functions. So the first one I'm going to do is here and I'm going to take all of this because this is where the URL is and this is where we do our request to the server. So I'm going to indent that and here I'm going to call a new function. I'm going to go and I'm going to call this request. And within that I'm going to say you need to give X. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is because what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the pagination within this function. So we're going to take this page one and we're going to put our X into there like this and we're going to turn this into an F string. So when we get down to our final loop, every time we loop through this um, request, we'll put a new number in here, which will in then in turn be put into here and get us the next page. The last thing we need to do to this function is we don't actually want to do this articles equal part, we want to turn this into the return. So this, when we run this function, it does this for us, it gets the information, it uh, puts our soup variable and then we do soup.findall and we find all of our posts and that that is returned out of our request. The next one we want to do is the pass function, which is nice and simple, so let's create a new one here, pass. And within this, we want to give it a variable. Now I'm going to call this articles. So what this means is, if we indent all of this, put our code on there. So we're going to give it a variable. So when we run this function, we're going to save the output, which is our soup.findall, into a variable, an object. And we're going to then give it to our next function to do this next part for us. Uh, and then the third part, the third and final function is the output. So we'll just do output like this. And we don't need to give that anything. And we are just going to indent this and now let it run like that. A good thing to do is to test your functions to make sure that they all work. And to do that, we can, um, let's come back down to our terminal. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see. So if we run Python 3, in my case, it might just be Python in yours, dash i, and the name of your file, which is scrapepress in my case, that opens up a interactive Python terminal within VS Code for us to test our functions. So the first one is request. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's type in request. And remember, we needed to give it x, which we are going to decide as a number. So I'm going to put 1 in there. If this works, we will basically get all of this output pasted to the terminal. There we go, we can see it all there. All of this, which is the where the information with the articles are. But what we want to do is we want to actually save this into a variable. So I'm going to call the articles like this is equal to and then request. And then again, I'm going to do number one. So if we run that, if you see down here, hopefully you can see that. I'll run it again. There we go. Save this this output that we just did that came to the terminal into this variable. So now we can run our next function. So let's just collapse this one out of the way. So we can see this one is the pass one, which means we are doing for item in articles. We're getting the title, date, author, and link, and then we are creating our dictionary with our link with the href here, which gets us the actual href tag, uh, attribute, sorry, in the element. So now we can do pass and then give it articles that we just created. And we can run that no errors and now we can just do output we can run that and there we go save to xlxx so if we come out of this view and we go we've got an article list here so if we go reveal that in explorer and open that up you'll see that we've got our excel file with the title the date the author and the actual link so let's close out of that the next thing that we would want to do is to deal with pagination. Now I touched on this a bit in our first function, let's close these ones, by going to x here, which is the page number. 
So if we copy this link again and go back to the actual website. Okay, so we can see that we're back on the first page of the website. Now it's actually chopped off the slash one page with our on the URL because it's obviously defaulting to this one. But if we were to go to, let's say the last page, which is 85, you can see the URL up there, slash 85. We want to find out what happens when we go to 86. We want to see what sort of an error it is. So if we type 86 in here, okay, great. So we get nothing found. Now, in some cases, you can do a try and accept error within your while loop. And when it doesn't find anything that you're doing your find all for, it will raise the error and you can break out of your while loop. But in this case, if we go to inspect, make this a bit bigger, what we are actually searching for is an article. And this actual nothing found is an article class. So that will um, cause us problems if we do try and accept. But what we can do is we can actually do a length. Um, and if the length is zero, we know that there are no more articles on this page. And then we can just do an if statement. So I'll show you what I mean now. We can collapse down our functions because we know they all work. Underneath, we would want to do a while loop. So we want to do while true. And now what this means is this is just going to run forever indefinitely until we break out of it. So then we would want to take what we put into our terminal down here. So articles like this. And then we had the pass, which worked fine. And then the output. Except with the output, we need this to be on the outside of our while loop. Otherwise, we would create a new Excel file for every page that we loop through as opposed to the total pages at total articles for the pages at the end. So the one other thing that we need is because we want to loop through all the pages, we want to turn this back to X and outside our while loop, we're just going to put X is equal to one. So what that is, is that means the first time round, we're going to put one in here. So when we get to the end of our loop and we go back to the beginning, we want to add one to X. The easiest way to do that is, is, is X is equal to X plus one. So what that means is that every time we go through one iteration of this loop, it adds one to X. So that basically gets us the next page number. So let's check out the uh, error handling. So we said that we have, um, okay, so if we start on page 84, and if we put in, uh, let's say, above all of this, we'll put in a quick print statement, which should tell us what page we're on. Page, uh, and we can do another F string. So we can put our X in there like that, and the F at the front, which will tell us what number page we're actually on, and the number of X. And then underneath our articles uh, request, if we do print length of the articles, then that will tell us how many it's found on that page. So what we'll see down here when we run this is after we get past page 85, it'll go to zero. Look, I'll stop that there. So we can see right here that page 84 had 12 on it, 85 had five and 86 had zero. And we got all the way down to page 90 and we're still going and we're not finding anything. So what we can do is we can put an if statement in here. So we can go We'll keep that in there and we can do uh, if the length of articles is not equal to zero pass the articles and if it is else we want to just break and then under here we can do a quick print statement just to say uh, completed saved to Let's not put that there. Let's do uh, total articles is, and then we'll add in uh, here the length of the article list in this case, because every time we go through our pass, we add it to our article list, which is a blank list that we created up here. So we can just put this in at the bottom to tell us how many there are. So we can do, let's do Let's leave it at 84. So 84 was 12, 85 was five. So we should end up with 17, except I've done that wrong. We were just missing this bracket here. So we can now run that. And we're on page 84 every time because I've made a mistake <laughs> and I've managed to remove my X is equal to X plus one. So you can see we were just stuck on the same page over and over and over again. 
which with our while true loop would run indefinitely. Okay, so this time we should be on 84, 85, 86, save to XLSS. But we didn't actually print out this because I didn't write the word print in front of my print statement. Okay, this time, <laughs> this time, 84, 85, 86, completed, total articles is 17. Perfect. So we know that we went through all of those pages, we reached the end because we started at the end to, to uh, check out how it would, um, how we'd want to deal with the error handling. And we've got a total of 17 articles and that was on the last two pages, which was a 12 and a five. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm just going to add in um, a time, um, I'm going to import time because I'm going to put a little sleep in between each request just so we slow ourselves down a little bit. I'll put it in straight after this. I'll just do, after here, we'll just do time.sleep. And we'll just make it, we'll make it 1.5, I think, in this case. And that will just basically slow our request down to the server instead of hammering through it, all of this. So I'm going to set x is equal to 1. And I'm going to let this run. And we will see the output at the end. So there we go, guys. We can see it's worked through all of the pages from 1 to 86, not including 86. What I had to do is I actually had to change time sleep to 3 to give it a 3 second gap because I was hitting the max retry. So uh, just be uh, aware of that. So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this two part series. Uh, we covered again the three main sort of functions for creating a, a good web scraper. Uh, we did some uh, passing with beautiful soup uh, and we've uh, dealt with pagination and looked at how to uh, work out how you get to when you get to the end of the pages to see how the errors handle. So thanks for watching and uh, comment if you've got anything to say. Hit this, hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing. There's more web scraping content to come and plenty already on my channel. Cheers, guys. Bye.